Okay, welcome to our first example on hydraulic lifts. So this is going to be a pretty straightforward example and it's probably a break from all the theory and all the equation derivation that we've been doing. But in this example, we have this hydraulic lift and on the left side, we have this piston one and then we have piston two and piston two is holding up this very poorly drawn car. Now inside of this hydraulic lift is an incompressible fluid and the mass density for this liquid or this uh, fluid contained inside of the hydraulic system, I'll just call rho, that's the mass density, that is going to be 900 kilograms per meter cubed and we'll need this value in a later problem. But in this example, we want to find out answers to two questions. So I have these two questions right here. First one is being, what force F1 should be applied to piston one to support a car of mass 1300 kilograms at the same level? So what this is asking is that to piston one, we wanna apply some sort of force that we'll call F1. And what is that force so that piston two can support a car that weighs 1300 kilograms while the two pistons are at the same level? And that's gonna be very important. The second question is how much additional force is required to be added to this F1 force that we applied to piston one to be able to lift this car up by a distance of, in this case, 1.8 meters. So we do need a little bit more information for these two pistons. Piston one has a diameter of seven centimeters, so that's the diameter of this piston, and both of the pistons are circular. And piston two is obviously a lot bigger, and its diameter is 30 centimeters. So this is diameter. So respectively, the radius for piston one is 3.5 centimeters and the radius for piston two is 15 centimeters, right? Just the di diameter divided by two. Now to solve for the very first equation, if you remember for the last few videos, we derived quite a few different equations, but one of the equations we derived was F2 is equal to F1 times A2 over A1 and this term right here was the multiplication factor that we studied, minus rho g h times a2. So this was essentially the equation that we used to basically figure out what f2 was, in other words, piston two, the larger of the two pistons, uh, given that we had f1, area two, area one, and some other different parameters. And we did this by basically understanding or equating two different pressures within the fluid to basically figure out this relationship. And if you don't know where this equation came from, I would highly recommend watching the last few videos, probably like the last two or three where we get into the derivation of this equation. But nonetheless, we have this equation, F2 equals F1 times A2 over A1 minus rho g h times A2. Now this is pretty self-explanatory, but I do wanna go back to this question. The force that we are looking at, F1, is going to be applied here, so I'll actually write that in so we, oops, see that force. So that is F1 that we wanna apply. This car right here has a mass of 1300 kilograms, so we'll need to convert that into a force by multiplying it by gravity, and that will be what F2 is. So let's actually start doing that. So F2 right here is going to be mass times gravity, which is 1300 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. And that gives us a value of 12,753 newtons. Now F1 is unknown. So that's what we're trying to figure out, right? F1 is this value right here. What value of F1 do we need to hold up a car of 1300 kilograms? Or in other words, the force that's being applied by that car, the weight is 12,753 newtons. Now, if we look back at this equation, we see this term right here, right? Rho g h times a2. Now, the question is asking, this question A is asking what force should we apply so that 
it can support a car of that certain mass at the same level. So in other words, piston one and piston two are going to be at the same level. Now, if you remember from the last few videos, this value H is really the distance between the two pistons. But because these two pistons are at the same level, H is equal to zero. So this term goes away and we don't have to worry about it for this particular uh, question. So what we really need to find out is this A2 and A1. Now remember, both pistons are circular. So area one, which is a smaller piston, is going to be pi times r squared. Now the diameter for piston one, so I'll just call that diameter of piston one, is equal to seven centimeters. So that means the radius of piston one is 3.5 centimeters. And to get this into meters, we just divide by 100. So this is really 0 0.035 meters. So that's the radius of piston one. And we can do the same thing for piston two. So the diameter of two is 30 centimeters and that means the radius of two is 15 centimeters. And once we divide that by 100, we convert it into meters. That's going to be uh, 0 0.15 meters. So going back to this equation, area one is pi r squared. So pi times r, 0 0.035 meters squared. And I'll just leave it as that for now. And then area two is the same thing, pi times r squared, which was 0.15 meters squared. So we have area one and area two, area one and area two. And we can plug these four values into this equation right here. And so again, what we're really left with is just this F2 equals F1 times A2 over A1. So F2 was 12,753 newtons, and that equals F1, right, the force that we're trying to find, times area two over area one, pi times 0 0.15 meters squared over pi times 0 0.035 meters squared, right? Area two over area one, and you notice that the pi's cancel out, and if we just plug this into our calculator, we'll get F1 is equal to about 694.33 newtons. Now, I wanna bring your attention to, again, this A2 over A1 term, which is this term right here. This is what we call our force multiplication factor. And if we figured out what A2 over A1 was, well, for this calculation, A2, and I'll just do this kind of on the side here, A2 over A1, was about 18.37. And so what this factor really is, is that we can amplify force one by this 18.37 factor in order to get a counter force of 12,753. So what we're really doing is we're multiplying F1 by some sort of factor, this force multiplication factor, to get a larger force. And that's kind of the beauty of hydraulic systems with Pascal's principle, and it's used to do some really cool things. Okay, so I'll leave it at that. In part two, we'll actually go and look at this question right here. So how much additional force is required to move the car up by 1.8 meters? So see you then.